JavaScript promises are just like monads, and I think I can explain them to you in two minutes. Think of a monad as a time bubble that encapsulates a value. It's a time bubble that will give you that value sometime in the future. Once your value is in the bubble, you always need to use dot then to access it. To get the value into the bubble, you use new promise and you assign that to a variable. Once you have it as a variable, you can return that stuff from a function. And if you're doing then, you can do multiple thens, as many as you want. And that's basically how JavaScript mo promises are just like monads. Let me show you what that looks like in code. So let's say future is a new promise that takes a resolve and a reject function and after let's say five seconds it's going to resolve with the value of 42. So this is now just a value. We can do whatever we want with it but if we do dot then we're getting 42. And we can do this as many times as we want. Let's say, make a longer future where the promise comes to a, the promise comes out of the bubble only let's say 10 seconds from now or let's say 15 to give us a little bit more time. So 15 seconds from now we're gonna get the value 42. If we say future then console log, nothing happens because it hasn't been 15 seconds yet. We can do this multiple times. Now we're gonna have to wait 15 seconds and then we're gonna get, uh, there you go, four values of 42. If we call it now, it's immediately resolved. And that's all there is to JavaScript promises. It actually took me a couple of months to fully crock this in my mind and I'm pretty sure it's just like monads where now that I understand how it works, I am no longer able to explain it, but what I want to tell you is you don't actually have to understand how it works deep inside. Just figure out how to use it and keep using it and you'll eventually realize that you actually know how, how it works.